Welcome to Electro Online. In the previous video, we first took our original differential equation and changed it to this format. And we could only do that in the case where we have case two, critical damping, where alpha, the damping constant, equals the natural frequency of the circuit without the resistance. And then through a clever trick by pulling in another variable and letting it equal di dt plus i alpha, we're able to come up with a first order differential equation to replace a second order differential equation, which has the general solution of some constant times e to the minus alpha t. And then when we found that solution, we found the solution had the form e to the minus alpha t times the quantity a1t plus a2. Now we have the graph of that, and we realized that the graph reached the maximum value just as it hits the e to the minus alpha t curve, goes through that curve, and then eventually, as time goes to infinity, the two curves come together. Now what we're going to do here is figure out what this value is. Now it's marked as 1 over alpha, and that is known as the time constant of a critically damped function like that. Now let's see how we can come up with that value. We're going to take the portion of the curve, which is represented by the red, which is e to the minus alpha t times t. So we're going to take the first term of the two terms of the solution. And then we're going to take the derivative of that. So we're going to take the derivative, the ddt, of the quantity e to the minus alpha t times t. Now we're going to put the t in the front, so that makes it a little bit easier. So put the t in the front times that, like so. And then, let's go ahead and take the derivative of that. So we take the first, this is equal to the first t, times the derivative of the second, which is minus alpha times e to the minus alpha t, plus the second, which is plus e to the minus alpha t, multiplied times the derivative of the first, which is times 1. Then what we can do here is we can factor out an e to the minus alpha t, so this can be written as e to the minus alpha t, and what we have left then is a minus alpha t plus 1. So minus alpha t plus 1. So now next what we're going to do is we're going to set that derivative equal to 0. So set the derivative, the ddt, of this quantity, t e to the minus alpha t, set it equal to 0. I think my pen is dying on me, so let me get a new pen. So when we do that, that means we're going to set that equal to zero. So set e to the minus alpha t times minus alpha t plus 1 equal to zero. And so, of course, the only way that that can be equal to zero is if e to the minus alpha t equals zero. That's when t equals zero. And when we come over here, that would be a minimum value of the function. And then the next solution would be when this quantity right here is equal to zero. Presumably, that'll give us the maximum value right there. So let's find out if that's the case. So that means that minus alpha t plus 1 equals 0, or alpha t equals 1, or t is equal to 1 over alpha. And so that would be the location where a curve reaches a maximum, which is right there at that particular place. Hmm. Now remember that alpha was equal to omega, so we could say that the time is equal to 1 over Omega, of course, that can only happen in the special case, case 2, where we have critically damped uh, damping. And then we realize that omega is equal to 1 over the square root of LC. So we can write that t is equal to 1 over 1 over the square root of LC, or the time is equal to the square root of LC. So that's another way in which we can look at that particular point where the curve of a critically damped situation reaches a maximum right when the time equals the square root of LC, and that would be the time constant of our oscillating circuit, or the oscillating current as it goes back and forth, if there was no resistor. So that's how we realize where that time constant came from, in case you were wondering. And that is how it's done.